Lesson 12 The Call to Stand Sabbath Afternoon September 9 Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And then, that the servant might know this for himself, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Between the servant of God and the hosts of armed foemen was an encircling band of heavenly angels. They had come down in mighty power not to destroy, not to exact homage, but to encamp round about and minister to the Lord's weak and helpless ones. When the people of God are brought into straight places and apparently there is no escape for them, the Lord alone must be their dependence. Prophets and Kings, pages 256 and 257. The Church of Christ is God's agency for the proclamation of truth. She is empowered by Him to do a special work, and if she is loyal to God, obedient to His commandments, there will dwell within her the excellency of divine power. If she will be true to her allegiance, there is no power that can stand against her. The forces of the enemy will be no more able to overwhelm her than is the chaff to resist the whirlwind. There is before the church the dawn of a bright, glorious day, if she will put on the robe of Christ's righteousness, withdrawing from all allegiance to the world. God calls upon his faithful ones who believe in him to talk courage to those who are unbelieving and hopeless. Turn to the Lord, ye prisoners of hope. Seek strength from God, the living God. Show an unwavering, humble faith in his power and his willingness to save. When in faith we take hold of his strength, he will change, wonderfully change, the most hopeless, discouraging outlook. He will do this for the glory of his name. Prophets and Kings, pages 259 and 260. Satan watches eagerly to find Christians off their guard. Oh, that the followers of Christ would remember that eternal vigilance is the price of eternal life. Many have a slumbering faith. Unless they are invigorated, revived, quickened into action, their souls will be lost. Self must die, and Christ must be enthroned in the heart as all and in all. The thoughts must be stayed on Him. Then the life will be an honor to His name. The soul will receive power from on high to resist Satan's specious devisings. Have Seventh-day Adventists forgotten the warning given in the sixth chapter of Ephesians? We are engaged in a warfare against the hosts of darkness. Unless we follow our leader closely, Satan will obtain the victory over us. The Upward Look, page 200. Sunday, September 10. Battle Speech. Christ did not tell his disciples that their work would be easy. He showed them the vast confederacy of evil arrayed against them. They would have to fight against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. But they would not be left to fight alone. He assured them that he would be with them, and that if they would go forth in faith, they should move under the shield of omnipotence. He bade them be brave and strong, for one mightier than angels would be in their ranks, the general of the armies of heaven. He made full provision for the prosecution of their work and took upon himself the responsibility of its success. So long as they obeyed his word and worked in connection with him, they could not fail. The Acts of the Apostles, page 29. All who would be soldiers of the cross of Christ must gird on the armor and prepare for conflict. They should not be intimidated by threats or terrified by dangers. They must be cautious in peril, yet firm and brave in facing the foe and doing battle for God. The consecration of Christ's follower must be complete. Father, mother, wife, children, houses, lands, 
everything must be held secondary to the work and cause of God. He must be willing to bear patiently, cheerfully, joyfully, whatever in God's providence he may be called to suffer. His final reward will be to share with Christ the throne of immortal glory. Judges chapter 7 verse 4 quoted. The Lord is willing to do great things for us. We shall not gain the victory through numbers, but through the full surrender of the soul to Jesus. We are to go forward in his strength, trusting in the mighty God of Israel. The Lord is just as willing to work through human efforts now and to accomplish great things through weak instrumentalities. It is essential to have an intelligent knowledge of the truth, for how else could we meet its wily opponents? The Bible must be studied, not alone for the doctrines it teaches, but for its practical lessons. You should never be surprised. You should never be without your armor on. Be prepared for an emergency, for any call of duty. Be waiting, watching for every opportunity to present the truth. Familiar with the prophecies, familiar with the lessons of Christ. But do not trust in well-prepared arguments. Argument alone is not enough. God must be sought on your knees. You must go forth to meet the people through the power and influence of His Spirit. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 2, page 1003. Monday, September 11 Finding Strength in Christ Without the enlightenment of the Spirit of God, we shall not be able to discern truth from error and shall fall under the masterful temptations and deceptions that Satan will bring upon the world. We are near the close of the controversy between the Prince of Light and the Prince of Darkness, and soon the delusions of the enemy will try our faith of what sort it is. If ever there was a time when we needed faith and spiritual enlightenment, it is now. Those who are watching unto prayer and are searching the scriptures daily with an earnest desire to know and do the will of God will not be led astray by any of the deceptions of Satan. We want the truth on every point. We want it unadulterated with error and unpolluted by the maxims, customs, and opinions of the world. We want the truth with all its inconvenience. The acceptance of truth ever involves a cross. But Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for us, and shall we not give him our best affections, our holiest aspirations, our fullest service? In Heavenly Places, page 350. From the days of Adam to our own time, our great enemy has been exercising his power to oppress and destroy. He is now preparing for his last campaign against the church. All who seek to follow Jesus will be brought into conflict with this relentless foe. The more nearly the Christian imitates the divine pattern, the more surely will he make himself a mark for the attacks of Satan. All who are actively engaged in the cause of God, seeking to unveil the deceptions of the evil one and to present Christ before the people, will be able to join in the testimony of Paul in which he speaks of serving the Lord with all humility of mind, with many tears and temptations. Satan assailed Christ with his fiercest and most subtle temptations, but he was repulsed in every conflict. Those battles were fought in our behalf. Those victories make it possible for us to conquer. Christ will give strength to all who seek it. No man without his own consent can be overcome by Satan. The tempter has no power to control the will or to force the soul to sin. He may distress, but he cannot contaminate. He can cause agony, but not defilement. The fact that Christ has conquered should inspire his followers with courage to fight manfully the battle against sin and Satan. The Great Controversy, page 510 The children of God are wise when they trust in that wisdom alone which comes from above, and when they have no strength but that which is from God. 
Separation from the friendship and spirit of the world is needful for us if we would be united to the Lord and abide in Him. Our strength and our prosperity consist in our being connected with the Lord, chosen and accepted of Him. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 689. Tuesday, September 12. The Great Controversy in Paul's Letters The Lord will work with every sincere devoted soldier of the cross, but no man can be a good soldier who thinks he must work independently of his fellow worker who regards his own judgment as the best. God's workers must blend together, one supplying what the other lacks. Do we make the preparation it is our privilege to make to stand against the wiles of the enemy? Do we realize the sacred character of God's work and the necessity of watching for souls as they that must give an account? We must be vigilant, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. This Day with God, page 125. The people of God must be prepared to withstand the wily foe. It is this resistance that Satan dreads. He knows better than we do the limit of his power and how easily he can be overcome if we resist and face him. Through divine strength, the weakest saint is more than a match for him and all his angels, and if brought to the test, he, the weakest saint, would be able to prove his superior power. Therefore Satan's step is noiseless, his movement stealthy, and his batteries masked. Man has in himself no power to oppose effectual resistance to evil. It is only as Christ abides in him by living faith, influencing his desires and strengthening him with strength from above, that man may venture to face so terrible a foe. Every other means of defense is utterly vain. The Faith I Live By, page 318 Satan frequently appears as an angel of light, arrayed in the livery of heaven. He assumes friendly airs, manifesting great sanctity of character and high regard for his victims, the souls whom he means to deceive and destroy. Perils lie in the path which he invites souls to travel, but he succeeds in concealing these and presents the attractions only. The great captain of our salvation has conquered in our behalf that through him we might conquer, if we would, in our own behalf. But in order to be saved, you must accept the yoke of Christ and lay off the yoke which you have fashioned for your neck. The victory that Jesus gained in the wilderness is a pledge to you of the victory that you may gain through his name. Your only hope and salvation is in overcoming as Christ overcame. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, pages 456 and 457. Wednesday, September 13. Standing on the Ancient Battlefield In every age since the fall of Adam, the opposition of evil agencies has made the lives of those who would be loyal and true to God's commandments a continual warfare. Those who would at last be victorious must meet and conquer the forces of Satan, who, with fierce determination, opposes every step of advance. They must meet a vigilant foe, a crafty enemy who never sleeps and who tries untiringly to undermine the faith of God's servants. I wish that I could trace words which would present this matter as it is. God expects His soldiers to be ever on duty. Never are they to yield to temptation, never to be unjust. They are neither to yield nor flee. Relying on the strength of God, they are to maintain their integrity. With a firmness that will not yield an inch, they are to hold fast to the word, it is written. In Heavenly Places, page 260. 
The Christian is to be rooted and grounded in the truth that he may stand firm against the temptations of the enemy. He must have a continual renewal of strength, and he must hold firmly to Bible truth. Fables of every kind will be brought in to seduce the believer from his allegiance to God, but he is to look up, believe in God, and stand firmly rooted and grounded in the truth. Keep a firm hold upon the Lord Jesus and never let go. Have firm convictions as to what you believe. Let the truths of God's Word lead you to devote heart, mind, soul, and strength to the doing of His will. Lay hold resolutely upon a plain thus saith the Lord. Let your only argument be, it is written. Thus we are to contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. That faith has not lost any of its sacred holy character, however objectionable its opposers may think it to be. Those who follow their own mind and walk in their own way will form crooked characters. Vain doctrines and subtle sentiments will be introduced with plausible presentations to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Are church members building upon the rock? The storm is coming, the storm that will try every man's faith of what sort it is. Believers must now be firmly rooted in Christ, or else they will be led astray by some phase of error. Let your faith be substantiated by the Word of God. Grasp firmly the living testimony of truth. Have faith in Christ as a personal Savior. He has been and ever will be our Rock of Ages. The testimony of the Spirit of God is true. Change not your faith for any phase of doctrine, however pleasing it may appear, that will seduce the soul. Evangelism, page 361. Thursday, September 14 Rustling Against Evil Powers Till the close of time, there will be a conflict between the Church of God and those who are under the control of evil angels. The early Christians were often called to meet the powers of darkness face to face. By sophistry and by persecution, the enemy endeavored to turn them from the true faith. At the present time, when the end of all things earthly is rapidly approaching, Satan is putting forth desperate efforts to ensnare the world. He is devising many plans to occupy minds and to divert attention from the truths essential to salvation. In every city, his agencies are busily organizing into parties those who are opposed to the law of God. The arch deceiver is at work to introduce elements of confusion and rebellion, and men are being fired with a zeal that is not according to knowledge. But God's faithful messengers are to go steadily forward with their work. Clothed with the panoply of heaven, they are to advance fearlessly and victoriously, never ceasing their warfare until every soul within their reach shall have received the message of truth for this time. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 219 and 220. The connection of the visible with the invisible world, the ministration of angels of God, and the agency of evil spirits are plainly revealed in the scriptures and inseparably interwoven with human history. There is a growing tendency to disbelief in the existence of evil spirits while the holy angels that minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, are regarded by many as spirits of the dead. But the scriptures not only teach the existence of angels, both good and evil, but present unquestionable proof that these are not disembodied spirits of dead men. The Great Controversy, page 511. The power and malice of Satan and his host might justly alarm us were it not that we may find shelter and deliverance in the superior power of our Redeemer. We carefully secure our houses with bolts and locks to protect our property and our lives from evil men, but we seldom think of the evil angels who are constantly seeking access to us and against whose attacks we have, in our own strength, no method of defense. If permitted, they can distract our minds, disorder and torment our bodies, destroy our possessions and our lives. 
their only delight is in misery and destruction. Fearful is the condition of those who resist the divine claims and yield to Satan's temptations until God gives them up to the control of evil spirits. But those who follow Christ are ever safe under his watch care. Angels that excel in strength are sent from heaven to protect them. The wicked one cannot break through the guard which God has stationed about his people. The Great Controversy, page 517. For further reading, This Day with God, Complete Commitment, page 128, and That I May Know Him, Fortress of the Soul, page 346.